talk to all you people, find out what you think about us, what you think about the film. And that is really the, the good thing about it, because without you, we don't have a job. So you, we owe you a debt of thanks, and uh, you guys keep buying our fucking movies or we're gonna come down and get your asses. He's absolutely right, he's my man. Same, same thing with me, I jumped on the train uh, last last year and I thought the train stopped a long time ago and here I am in New York, never been here before, a fantastic experience. I didn't think that's going to happen when we start to do the movie, right? And uh, thank you guys to come and see me because as I said, right, you must be fucking insane, right? Because to have my autograph after 35 years, right, I, I, I can't almost see what I'm writing. But thank you. Thank you all. I think one of the reasons that these films have sustained over the years is because we need these stories to be told. Um, anybody who's read Joseph Campbell, The Hero with a Thousand Faces, that's a, the synthesis of, of all mythological stories that go back to the Greeks and the Romans and so on. And these films are based on that. And we need these stories to be told, just like the Star Wars movies, just like the Lord of the Rings films. These are all stories based on those great mythological uh, stories that have kept people alive. There's a, we have a psychological need for these kind of stories, a philosophical background, the, the moral stories that go through them. And I think that's why we're still here today, because we need them. One of the wonderful things about Mad Max 2 in particular, Road Warrior, is that it never aged. And even though it's 35 years old, if you've never seen the movie and you watch it right now, um, it seems as fresh as the day it was made 35 years ago. There's nothing in it to, to date it. Bruce said something very interesting last night at the Q&A, that uh, the original Road Warrior was uh, based around uh, petrol. Uh, uh, what do you call it here? Gas. Oh, gasoline. Tell that story. Tell the story. Oh, um, I, I think George Miller, the director and also the, the conceiver of the, 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 this whole storyline, uh, he's a very prescient man. He, he looks at the, the present world and sees what, sees what the future might, might hold for us. And that's why those early films were based on, the, on gasoline being, being a rare element, something that we fought for that we were desperate for because that we needed, that, that our survival was based on it. Yeah, our, our survival was based on it. And today, Fury Road continues that line, except it's no longer gasoline, it's water. And anybody who's familiar with a thing called climate change, that's where George is basing his new uh, trilogy on. Water is the valuable thing. Water is what everybody's fighting for. I just wanted to add on the uh, on the first initial question about the fans and how you guys are still here and um, I want to thank you guys as well. I played a, you know, I was only a little character and I, I can't believe that when I was eight years old that even today, 35 years on, you guys would uh, be here and showing up and yeah, getting my autograph and uh, I think it's pretty amazing. It's quite humbling. Um, you know, great to see I had a little kid here come up and get my autograph. His name is Alex if you're out there. And, uh, you know, he was just looking at me like, wow. And I said, I signed an action figure for him. And uh, I said to him, who's that? And he said, it's you. And I said, no, I thought it was you. And he, he was just he, he, he gazing at me. And I think that's amazing. So a new generation of fans, I don't even think he's seen him. I think his dad's going to show him later on. Um, but that's amazing to see that, you know, it's still living on. So, yeah, glad to be here. Thanks, guys. And we, really, and we really love your support, we love you as, as our fans and we really appreciate the fact that uh, you still uh, love the, the trilogy, um, all of the four Mad Max movies rock in my opinion and uh, I'm a huge fan too, so from one fan to another thank you. Very nice. So I'm curious, at what point in time was there a specific thing, a specific incident that made any of you realise this was no longer just a movie. This was something bigger. This was a whole new genre being opened up and, and you were a part of that. I can tell you that because when somebody phoned me up from Sweden when I was living in Australia 
I want to have an interview with him and told me how good it was in Sweden and when I read in the magazines over in Sweden I was the best actor ever at and I couldn't understand that for peanuts right and I still don't of course I wasn't but, but at least I wrote it down but it's printed and I wrote magazines right uh, it was men's magazine right and that, that wrote up in hundred thousand copies and it went on two days right so it was uh, it's extreme right and uh, the movie was so popular over there, so you couldn't believe it, right? But uh, I didn't know because I was working on my dream. <laughs> um, I, I never wanted to be an actor, just so you know the truth. And I was a director, and that's where I wanted to stay because I was happy. Um, I realized that Mad Max had become bigger than I would ever be. When I got a phone call from America and they offered me a lot of money to come over and do weird science and play the role again. Um, and to be directed by one of the hottest directors in Hollywood at that time, John Hughes. That kind of made me realize that that little film I'd done in Australia had suddenly become very big. So, uh, you know, and it's gone on from there. My five minutes of fame hasn't gone away yet, damn it. I, um, I probably realised it a little bit later. Uh, about 15 years ago, I went to a, we had a reunion back in Broken Hill. It was uh, done by guys. Back to the Max was the reunion. And it was that when we went back to Broken Hill and went out to certain areas where, where the movie was shot and we, uh, we watched Mad Max 2 in the cinema where it actually premiered. And the turnout there was, was insane. Not just people from Broken Hill, but fans that came from all over Australia. And that's when I actually went really, this is still carrying on. And you know, that was 15 years ago. So that's probably when it hit me, it really hit me, yeah. Well, um, I found that over the years after Mad Max, I stayed in Australia for a number of years. People started to recognize me on the bus and uh, walking down the street. And at first I thought it was sort of weird, but it kept going and going and going. But the first time I had a real sense of the global impact of Mad Max was when I came over to the US in 1999 to do my first convention after leaving Farscape. Oh, I was still in Farscape at the time. That's when I realized at the conventions, thousands of people were asking me for Mad Max photos. And I, I didn't have any with me. And that was when it really impacted. Oh my God, this is just, this is massive. And it has never stopped. Oh, I haven't got much to say on that, except um, even now when I go through immigration into, uh, into America, when the guy at the immigration booth says, hey, you're the guy from Mad Max, I think, well, <laughs> it still benefits. So obviously, Fans gathering at conventions to celebrate movies like this, take pictures with celebrities, get their autographs, that's nothing new. What is rather new on the horizon is cosplay. Recreating the costumes and the characters from these movies. So I'm curious, when a maniac like myself shows up at your table, what is that like for you? Is that, is that an honor? Is that creepy? How does that feel? You take that behind the scene, okay? No, I'm kidding. I think it's great, you know? I think it's fantastic, and I give you a couple of training tips, right? So you really can look like me. And uh, that's, uh, that's, an, that's an honor, right? Because uh, nobody knows I did that match, right? And it's, it's bloody embarrassing to always say, hey, it's me, the, the man behind the mask, right? So I have the tattoo on my arm, right? At least I have something going for me, right? And I still didn't have it. <laughs> oh, thanks anyway, thank you. I've done a good job, though. I like it. Yeah. I think it's a great honor. In fact, uh, there's a warrior woman here who today. Where is she? Joe, come here. Look at this. I mean, this is absolutely spot on. It's incredible. I, I, it's a great honor. We love it. We absolutely love it. It's it's such a uh, it's such a pleasure. Thank you very much. I appreciate all the hard work you went to. We white girl. No, she said we love it. I was saying we. 
Um, I find it really interesting because it's very rare that I see someone that actually wears the full costume that I wore, which means that they've got the ass. Turn around. <laughs> Not often they've got their ass there. Most people tend to think it, so. But I think just to have people take the time to make the costume, to wear the costume, is very humbling because it means that you've affected someone very strongly for them to even want to do that. So I think that is just amazing on their behalf. And, you know, it's just very interesting. I think what's even more interesting for me was that I was voted into five magazines as one of the top five villains of the last 40 years. And I think that is bloody insane. Yeah, the legend was on. It's just ridiculous, but you know what? I'll take it. I was on the team's place. Sure. Um, I understand there were a lot of rewrites uh, during the filming of the script. Uh, is there anything that you remember filming that didn't make it into the final cut? I remember uh, things they put on. They put on in the scene when I killed off, uh, what's his name? Uh, Mike Prisby? Papa Gallo? Papa Gallo, right? He was supposed to survive. But uh, I was allowed to kill, kill him off, right? So an another one by the dust. Right? Yeah. And it's in that right time. I don't think there was a lot of um, changes made to the script when we were working. They were mostly made before we started and there was the end uh, the beginning and the end were different in the original script to the way we shot it that was basically about it and then they i mean things on any film change as you're filming simply because situations uh sets whatever so they have to modify things that happens a lot but i don't think there was i don't know is they, bruce was there any major changes made there's a, a small change in the chase. Um, at the beginning of the chase sequence, the gyrocopter pilot, of which that was not me, uh, crashed the gyrocopter. Luckily he survived and he had to race back. He had another sort of half assembled one back in Sydney and he had to race back and rebuild that one. And it took him about two or three weeks. And during that two or three weeks, they still moved on with the chase and shot it, and you'll see there's a little gap where the gyrocopter is not necessarily in the sky, but you'll see there are cutaways to it. So we, and we shot a lot of the cutaways, you know, the separate shots of the gyrocopter uh, later. But um, there is that little gap there. You don't notice it, but it's there. Questions? Sure, yeah, we'll take questions in a minute. How do you guys feel about the new film, Fury Road? Do you have any feelings on the right. new film? Have you seen it? I'm sorry, there's a new film? <laughs> there was only ever Road Warrior. I, I, no, I think I, Road Warrior was good, but I, I really do think it's brilliant. And I, I admire George for rebooting the, ser the, the whole series and going into another trilogy. I think there is a freshness about it. I think the fact that he's recast so many of those characters uh, sort of consolidates that freshness. And as I said earlier on, in the, in the previous movies, gasoline was the great product that everybody was fighting over. Uh, and this time it's, it's water. And it's, if you recognise the environment it's during that whole chase sequence, that they're looking for the, is it the green country or the green, the green land or whatever it is? The, the, and, um, and um, they don't find it because it's all dried up. And that's, that's his preoccupation right now, is climate. As a spectacle, it was probably the most amazing film ever shot. The costuming, the vehicles, the, the whole setup of that film was brilliant. It was George Miller to a T. Nobody can duplicate anything that George does. He does it way too well. Uh, to go in and watch, it was mind-blowing. I only have one question. 
how many lactating women does it take to fill a semi-trailer with milk? We're going to have that as a quiz at the end of the session, okay? I think it was, um, suddenly, I'm, I'm only guessing, um, but it must have been somewhat challenging for George to, after so many years, after 30 years, to, to reboot it. Uh, knowing that the most popular film of the trilogy was Road Warrior, Mad Max 2, out of, out of the three. So of course, if he's going to begin, again, where does he begin? Does he honor Mad Max 2? Does he take it from 3? Does he invent a whole new beginning to it? And I think uh, he did it justice. I think he did it very thoughtfully, carefully and brilliantly and brought it into the modern um, era now. I think it was absolutely extraordinary. He didn't concentrate too much on special effects. I don't know that we had any special special effects in uh, Road Warrior. I don't, do we have? We did have special effects. Um, it was very minimal. And uh, as far as I know, uh, Fury Road was reasonably minimal with special effects as well. It was just raw uh, adrenaline. And uh, that's what we love about, uh, that's one of the things we love about uh, Mad Max. So I think he, he did it justice. He did a terrific job. But for me, Road Warrior is number one, right? It's like you can only paint Mona Lisa once, right? After that, it becomes a copy. Remember, all these films are from the mind of George Miller, and without him, we wouldn't be up here. I mean, it's a the great thing about filmmaking is it's a collaborative act. Without the without the director, without the Norma Morriso, who's now passed on, bless her heart, uh, who designed all the costumes. Without Terry Hayes, the man who wrote the script, along with Byron Kennedy, who has also passed on, the, the partner of, uh, of the George Miller franchise. Without those folk on the other side of the camera, we wouldn't be up here, and, um, and we owe them that. Yeah, just uh, ending that on uh, Fury Road, I went to the premiere in Sydney, and uh, I remember coming out and I, I rang my mate, um, who's building an interceptor for me, and uh, he said, what was it like, what was it like, and I said, mate, it was like watching a two-hour trailer. It was just action packed from start to finish in your face. And I, I actually, I did an interview the next day on uh, Sydney Radio, and I said I've got to watch it again to actually fully comprehend really what happened. Um, mind blowing, mind blowing film, and uh, just brilliant. Yeah. Great, thanks. I've got one more question, uh, but for anyone in the audience who has, who has a question, go ahead and line up by this gentleman right here in the, in the yellow shirt. And then we'll take your question uh, after after I go. All right, this question is actually for Bruce. Um, in Mad Max 2, you played the Gyro Captain, and in Mad Max Beyond Thunderdome, you played Jedediah. And there are a lot of similarities and parallels between those characters. But according to George Miller, apparently those are two separate characters. Was it odd for you to, to play those, or how did you feel about that? It certainly wasn't odd, it was great to get the job. Um, but um, uh, th th that's the way he presented it to me, that, that they were separate roles. Um, and I was hoping to create something different, but I guess I am me. And so the way I, and also, uh, the Road Warrior had, was so stamped in people's minds. I guess when they saw my performance in Mad Max 3, they just kept thinking of the gyrocopter pilot. Um, but um, I, I treated them both quite differently, quite differently. All right, thank you. All right, we'll start with some audience questions. 